So for reading, these are the most important stuffs. And the things which are less important, highlight six out of six, even though we use two extra words. All students do their homework at home. You will get to hear some top secrets of PTE, which will take your score from here to all the way here. Two of your answers were correct, B and D, but you lost one marks because you got negative markings here for E. When you're unsure, don't answer it. Hi everyone, in this video, I will talk about seven most common mistakes that students make in their PTE exam for which they miss out their desired score. In my first attempt at PTE, I got 80 plus in speaking, listening, and reading, but on writing, I got 77. Just for two marks, my dreams were broken. After the first exam, I gave myself one week and prepared even better. And for the second exam, this is what I got. I got 90 in speaking and listening and got 84 in reading and writing. Pretty cool, right? So how did I manage to get this score? I scored 90 because I managed to avoid some most common mistakes that people make in PTE. I will share all those mistakes in this video. So watch this video till the end. Who knows, you might be the next one to get 90. Also, I will be sharing a practice plan for both listening and reading, which you can follow every day to get a good score. Lastly, I'm warning you. In this video, you will get to hear some top secrets of PTE, which will take your score from here to all the way here. Mistake number one, fear of adding extra words in write from dictation. A lot of students have this misconception that you will be penalized for adding extra words. But in reality, this isn't true. I know you won't believe me until I show you a demo. So let's go. Let's play. All students do their homework at home. This one was pretty simple. It said all students do their homework at home. Let's say you're confused between student and students. Can you use two of them? Let me show. As you can see, I have used both student and students because I'm confused. Will I get penalized for this? Let me show you. Submit. 7 out of 7. I've used an extra word student, but it doesn't affect my marks. So this is what I mean. Similarly, if you're confused with the spelling of a word, just write both of them. You won't be penalized. Let me show you again. Road safety measures can reduce accidents. Suppose we don't know the spelling of measures. I'm confused between both of them. So I wrote both of them. And here, I'm not sure whether it was accident or accidents. That's why I use both of them. Let's see what happens now. Submit. Six out of six, even though we use two extra words. Long story short, don't hesitate to use extra words in write from dictation, especially when you're confused between two words. Mistake number two, spending too much time in multiple choice questions. Be it reading or listening, you shouldn't be spending too much time on multiple choice questions because they're not even worth 10% of the total marks. They just account for three to 5% at max. If you got a pen and paper, note down the things I will tell you now. It's very important. So for reading, these are the most important stuffs. Read aloud, highlight incorrect word, reading fill in the blanks, reading and writing fill in the blanks, reorder paragraph, and summarize written text. And the things which are less important, highlight incorrect summary, MCQ, single answers, MCQ, multiple answers. So please don't waste too much time on these things because even if you can't score good marks here, but if you do well here, you will still get 79 plus. Mistake number three, don't take too much stress while doing the repeat sentence. I discussed about repeat sentence with many, many students. And one important thing that I noticed, students who start panicking or get nervous, they score really bad in repeat sentence. There is a reason for it. Because when you are nervous or when you are panicking, you might not be fluent and you might fumble a lot which might make your score very, very low. It's completely okay if you miss one or two words. For example, there's 12 words in a sentence and you miss two words, or let's say you miss three words. That's fine, but you have to maintain the fluency and don't fumble, just finish the sentence in one go. Let me show you another example. For example, this sentence came in your exam. My first video about PTE reached 100,000 views on YouTube. Let's say you forgot two words here, views, and reached. Even then, just fluently say, my first video about PTE, 100,000 on YouTube. You will still get good marks if you say it with this fluency and pronunciation. Now let me show you how you can score very bad in repeat sentence. Let's say you remembered every single word, but this is how you repeated. 
my first video uh, uh, about PT reached 100,000 views on you, you, YouTube. Even though you got all the words correctly, you will still get less than 60. I can bet. So the main thing is you shouldn't panic, you shouldn't fumble. Just repeat it without any hesitations. Doesn't matter if you miss one, two or three words, but you should focus more on fluency and your pronunciation. Mistake number four, answering many options in multiple choice questions. A lot of students don't know that there is negative marking for answering many options in multiple choice. So if you are not 100% sure with your option, do not select it. Otherwise you will get negative markings. Let me show you. For example here, you have five options. You're 100% sure with option B and 100% sure with option D. Now for option E, you are confused. Let's say you're confused, but you still selected the answer. Now, let's see what happens. Submit. C. You selected B, D, and E. Two of your answers were correct, B and D. But you lost one mark because you got negative markings here for E. That's why, when you're unsure, don't answer it. Mistake number five, not using grammar techniques for reading fill in the blanks. Okay, this is very important. If you are good at reading, you do not need to follow any techniques for the fill in the blanks. I myself never used any grammar techniques for fill in the blanks. Never. The grammar techniques are specifically for all those people who are struggling to get good marks in fill in the blanks. Before I start showing you the grammar technique, let me tell you very clearly that this is not my strategy. The credit goes to this video. For all of you who are struggling with fill in the blanks and you guys are not getting good marks, this strategy can be life-changing. So here we have got a paragraph and we will try to fill in the blanks. For the first blank, have never been able to fully dash, able to. Just remember, after to, there should be always a verb. How many verbs have we got? Allocate, this is a verb. Understand, this is a verb. Let's see which one matches here. Been able to fully allocate, doesn't make sense. Have never been able to fully understand, so this answer will be here. First answer is understand. For the second blank, having an unexplained dash. After an, there should be a singular noun. First, let us see what nouns we've got. Mystery, this is a noun. Stars, this is a noun. But here stars won't be an answer because it's plural. The only singular noun is mystery. This is answer two. Moving to next blank. Astronomy also has dash. After has, it should be a verb. After has always put a verb. What is a verb? I have eaten. She has given. Here, eaten, given, these are verbs. In our options, we have got two verbs, amazed and served. But we can see astronomy also has served as a way to keep time. Served sounds best. So option three is served. So these are some of the techniques you can use for fill in the blanks. For example, after N, there will always be a singular noun. This might be helpful for you guys. But if you're really good at reading, you don't need all these techniques. You will be good anyway. Mistake number six is focusing too much on the content for writing essay. I've seen many students focusing so much on the content for the essay. Like they're spending five minutes to 10 minutes just making some solid points for the essay for the topic. But in reality, you just need a template and then make sure you don't make spelling mistakes or grammatical errors. In short, what I mean is you don't need to have in-depth knowledge about the topic. Just follow the template I've provided in my first video and then make sure you don't make grammatical errors or any typing mistakes. Make sure you revise it before submitting. And just use some keywords about the topic in the brackets as shown in the templates. Only those places you just need to say something about the topic. The other parts of the templates you can put, like you can copy and paste it. Last and final mistake, number seven, forgetting to double check spellings and grammatical errors. It is so very, very, very important to double check everything. Let me tell you a fact. In my PT exam, after finishing the essay, I was revising the whole essay. I found over 10 typing errors and five to 10 spelling mistakes as well. So if I didn't double check them, I think instead of getting 84 in reading, sorry, in writing, I would get something less than 60. So this is super important. Keep in mind. These were my seven mistakes which I really want you guys to avoid and as I promised in the starting of this video, I will provide you guys now the practice plan for reading and listening. So first we got reading. 
try to practice at least 20 to 25 read alouds every single day and then reading fill in the blanks like 20 questions also 25 questions reading and writing fill in the blanks and then try doing reorder paragraphs 15 a day and then highlight incorrect words seven paragraphs a day if you can practice them every single day consistently i'm pretty sure your score will improve you will have a very good reading score because practice makes a man better here is the practice plan for listening do summarize spoken text 15 a day and then fill in the blanks 20 a day for write from dictation and repeat sentence they are very very important so try practicing 40 40 each of them this won't take much time for you. And for the MCQs, single and multiple, try doing 10 a day, each of them. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And if you want to contact me directly, you can do it through my Instagram or you can also contact me through my Facebook page. Also, let me know what kind of videos you want in the future. And thank you so much for making me hit 4,000 subscribers. Means a lot. Rafael Isham, signing off.